This is the Orange Pi 5 Max. Now this is a successor of the Orange Pi 5 Pro which has the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi 5. Now we will look at this board in detail and see its various components. So this is nearly the form factor of the Raspberry Pi 5. Let's actually go ahead and compare this with a Raspberry Pi 5. So I have this Raspberry Pi 5 with me. So this is how it looks like from the length and it is a little bit bigger than the Raspberry Pi 5. And that's where these components are coming into picture and looking from the breadth, they are identical. I would say from the length, it is a little bit bigger than the Raspberry Pi 5, but from the breadth, they are the same. So this is what it is in comparison with the Raspberry Pi 5. Now let's look at what are the various components that this board has. So first of all, we have this external antenna through which we have Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth. Now this is controlled using this chip here, but now let's look at the main thing that powers this board. We have this Rockchip RK3588, which has a quad-core Cortex-A76 at 2.4 GHz and a quad-core Cortex-A55 at 1.8 GHz. We also have an integrated ARM Mali G610 GPU inside it. We also have an embedded MPU which supports computing power up to 6 Tera operations per second. Now along with this we have this LDDDR5 RAM which can come in 4GB, 8GB or 16GB variants. Now next we have are these full-fledged HDMI ports which are HDMI 2.1 and these support 8K at 60 frames per second. Now along with this you have this 3.5 jack for audio input and output. Now this board is powered using this USB-C connector here. Now this requires a power supply of 5V and 5 amperes, which is similar to the one that the Raspberry Pi 5 has. Now in terms of connectivity, we have this 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, which is controlled by this chip here. In terms of the USB configurations, we have two USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0 that support data as well as power. Now next we have these two connectors with which we can connect an external camera to it. Now along with this you have this 2 pin RTC connector to connect a 3 volt battery to it. Now, in terms of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so this module controls a Wi-Fi 6E as well as Bluetooth 5.3 and this is done via this connector which connects an external antenna to it. Now along with this we have the standard 40 pin GPIO headers here. Next we have is this 2 pin 5 volt output as well as a 5 volt fan connector here. Along with this, we have a MIPI LCD interface to connect an LCD to this board. Next we have is this LED indicator, a power button and as well as a microphone on this SBC. So now this is the first SBC that at least I have seen that has a microphone on the SBC board. Now these were the various components that we had on the front side. Now let's look at the bottom side. So on the bottom side, let's first of all remove this sticker from here and let's look at the various components. So first thing that we have is this micro SD card slot in order to connect a micro SD card to this board. Next, we have these two connectors in order to connect a eMMC module to this board. So Orange Pi provides these eMMC modules in order to expand the onboard storage of the board itself. Now next we have this power management unit here. So we have this Rockchip RK806 which controls the power on this board. Now another great feature about this board is that we can connect a full-fledged 2280 NVMe drive to this M.2 M key connector. Now this connector provides full 4-lane PCI Express 3.0 capabilities and you can connect a 2280 NVMe drive directly on this board without the need of an external hat to be connected to this board. Now this is something that I really like that we can connect an NVMe drive on this board directly. So these are the various components that we have on the back side. Now what we are going to do is we are going to test this board to see its various capabilities as well as get some performance numbers for this board. Orange Pi provides a bunch of operating systems that can be downloaded from their site. They have various builds including Ubuntu, Debian, Arc Linux, as well as Android image that you can download for this board. Now there are also Ubuntu for Rockchip, which is an open source project that ports Ubuntu for Rockchip SOCs, also provides builds for the Orange Pi 5 Max. I wanted to use Ambient Linux but currently we don't have support for it and might only be available if there is some funding made to Ambient for this device. So fingers crossed. 
I started first by installing Debian image from Orange Pi on a micro SD card to perform a few tests. The first test that I did was checking the performance in terms of the usage. I felt that the desktop experience was pretty good in terms of usage. It was quite quick in opening the browser, loading pages and moving the window around worked without any lags. I then tried running a YouTube video at 1080p resolution in full screen. It lost a few frames at the beginning but then the video ran smoothly. I then changed it to 4K resolution and the video continued playing without any frames being dropped and the video played smoothly. Note that all these tests that are performed are without any heatsink or a fan in place. So that means no sound at all and it's totally silent. Next I installed a 2280 NVMe drive on the back in the M.2 M key slot which provides full 4 lane PCI Express Gen 3 connections. Initially when I ran the test it gave me like 220 megabytes per second but I was like I must be doing something wrong. I then formatted the drive with ext4 file format and then ran the test and then I got speeds of around 2300 megabytes per second. That's nearly three times what I could get on the Raspberry Pi 5 with the NVMe hat. This is because the Raspberry Pi 5 has only a certified PCI Gen 2 with one lane for the FPC connector, which can be forced to use PCI Express Gen 3 and I was able to get max speeds of around 800 megabytes per second on the Raspberry Pi 5. Now I was expecting speeds of about 3900 megabytes per second considering it has PCI Express Gen 3 with full 4 lane. So I used the lspci command to view the PCIe configuration and found that it shows 8 giga transfers per second which corresponds to PCI Gen 3. So we should get definitely Gen 3 speeds. So this is a plus point from the Orange Pi 5 Max that it provides Gen 3 speeds as well as we don't need an extra hat for it. Next I attached the eMMC module and ran a test on it and it gave me around 300 megabytes per second which is much better than the speeds from the SD card which was about 60 megabytes per second. Next on running sysbench test which is a CPU intensive test that calculates prime numbers up to 20,000 for every 100,000 requests, this SBC was able to process 5,300 events per second with a total time of 19 seconds to complete this task. I then ran Geekbench test on the board and got results that showed the single core performance was a little lower than the Raspberry Pi 5 but the multi-core performance test performed nearly 20% better compared to the Raspberry Pi 5. Now the signal core performance might have been low because it might have run on the Cortex A55 core which is running at 1.8 GHz. While running the test I also checked the temperature and it rose from 35 degrees to about 60 degrees. When the CPU is idle it consumed about 2 watts of energy but while running Geekbench test it went up to 6 watt of energy usage. Remember that all these tests are run without any heatsink or CPU fan in place while the CPU was used at its maximum capacity. Next I further tested the 2.5 gigabit port and I was able to get speeds of about 2.3 gigabits per second to send and receive data. Now since I make videos around home assistant I wanted to run home assistant on this device but it was only possible to run it using docker. I then set up docker and ran the home assistant container on it and I was able to access the UI. After that I ran the containers for Whisper and Piper for my voice assistant and Whisper was able to convert speech to text within 4 seconds while the Raspberry Pi 5 took nearly 14 seconds for the same small int 8 model. I use this model on a day to day basis as it returns the right results for 95% of the time. You can also use a tiny int 8 model but it is not very reliable. When I tried the smaller tiny int 8 model, the Orange Pi 5 Max returned the result in about 1.2 seconds while the Raspberry Pi 5 took about 2.4 seconds that is nearly 2 times that of the Orange Pi 5 Max. Now to test the GPIO pins, I used the provided GPIO command to see the states of the pin. Then I used one of the pin as the output and connected an LED to it and using the right command I was able to toggle the output using 1 and 0 values. Currently there is no official fan available for this board so I bought the fan for the Orange Pi 5 Plus version thinking I would modify it and use it. 
but that was a dumb idea i still used the fan to see how the board's fan pins respond now when i connected the fan to the fan pins i saw that when the temperatures were below 50 degrees the fan stayed off once i ran the suspension test which increased the cpu temperatures above 50 degrees the fans started at lower speeds but as soon as it went above 55 degrees the fan spun faster so based on the temperature the fans will start increase in speed and stop when the temperatures drop now to get maximum power from this board i would suggest using it with a heat sink and a fan i will provide links to this into the description below Now in terms of usage you can use this board to run say home assistant using docker you could also run it as a nas device with open media world or you can use it as a small home server to run some applications to maybe kick off your home lab setup overall the board has a lot of capabilities wherein the cpu is much stronger than the raspberry pi 5 and with the built in slot for the nvme with full four lane pci express gen 3 you don't have to deal with buying a separate hat for this now if you want you can buy this board as well as the case and the fan with the links that are present into the description below let me know in the comments below what you think about this board and what are the use cases you would use this board for I'll be making another video on demonstrating some of its use cases and explore its AI capabilities with the NPU that provides six stops of processing power. Now if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button for more such videos to come. Now if you want to support this channel, there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.